So this is a 45-year-old male who um, has a past medical history significant for type 1 diabetes and neurofibromatosis. He was previously seen by us for right lower extremity claudication um, and had intervention in the anterior tibial, posterior tibial, and popliteal arteries. Uh, he did well after that, uh, but ultimately came back within the last few months with a new wound uh, in the region of the fourth and fifth metatarsal. Uh, so that's since been, those have since been amputated and debrided and uh, now on the follow-up imaging, if you can show the next slide. Uh, next one. So we have some uh, non-invasive uh, diagnostics that are showing a stenosis in the region of the tibioperoneal trunk and the uh, anterior tibial artery. This is just showing some imaging from the prior intervention. You can see when he came in in October of last year, uh, he had some disease in the tibioperoneal trunk and uh, distal popliteal, which we uh, just treated with angioplasty and looks much better on the post. Next slide. And then uh, same down below, you can see that the uh, AT and the PT were looking pretty bad before and ultimately responded well to angioplasty. All right, next slide. So ultimately, uh, poorly healing wound, critical limb ischemia, and uh, we're planning for a diagnostic angio from the left radial approach today with likely atherectomy and intervention. As you can see here, this is just a you know, selective angiogram from the right common femoral artery, the, you know, the, the inflow to this lesion is, is pretty normal. Uh, the proximal mid SFA is normal. There's a really minor lesion at the ad adductor canal. It's not clear whether that's clinically relevant here. And the P1 and P2 segments of the popliteal look pretty good. Um, it, it's really, again, uh, unfortunately for this patient, not until we get to the, 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 the P3 and the infrapopoteal anatomy that we really start to see the significant clinical burden of his disease. Can we go back to the previous run, please? So here you can see there's going to be a, a focal lesion at the, at, the, at the P3 segment, right at the trifurcation. Um, there's uh, very irregular heterogeneous disease of the tibial perineal trunk. The uh, posterior tibial artery, which is still the dominant vessel, is diminutive. The AT pretty much dies away in the proximal calf, and the perineal, unfortunately, dies away also. And uh, again, I think you guys got a preview of the foot. There's single vessel runoff through the PT into the, uh, into the lateral plantar, and, and that's sort of where we are right now. So what, what we've done so far is we've, we've, we've put in, if you could show uh, the setup that we have here, we have a, a 6 French, 119 centimeter, 6 French, slender sheath from the left wrist. It is in the proximal superficial femoral artery. And then Rami from that, uh, from that access site was able to wire into the posterior tibial with a 400 centimeter viper wire. And now uh, we are setting up to do uh, orbital atherectomy. Uh, obviously, you know, this is a, a difficult case because of the uh, issues of limb threat and the fact that he's a, uh, a, a, a patient who has failed previous intervention. But, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna try orbital atherectomy here. And again, I'll let, I'll let Rami sort of share with you what the you know, plan is here so far, but we are all set to go. So here you can see the lesion very clearly at the trifurcation or bifurcation. All right, so again, we're gonna use the CSI system. Wire is locked here. And so we're going to bring this down. Now, we don't need to treat this whole area. Really, we're just really focusing on this one area, which we're going to basically rub out with the CSI. So first question is, every time I do a thoracotomy, I am very concerned about distal migration, regardless the brand of a thoracotomy. And uh, in my small experience with the thoracotomy devices, yeah, it's 100% of distal migration. A distance, 100%, regardless. You can have a jet stream, turbo hawk, CSI, whatever you want. So are you guys using a filter or not? So we are not using a filter. And while I don't disagree with you that this technology is not you know, perfect, I, 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 
I do think that we could come up with some generalizations regarding uh, risk of significant distal embolization. So I think one thing that we all can agree upon is that when you're facing a very, very significant calcium burden, that clearly has been demonstrated with you know, independent core labs and with you know, dedicated feasibility studies to demonstrate an incidence of macroscopic debris in the basket. So I, I, I think that that is a, a clear risk factor. This patient, I, I think you guys saw in the angiograms, there is no you know, gross evidence of macroscopic calcification uh, in this patient's anatomy. The other risk factor, which I've found to be a significant issue, is the length of the lesion and specifically whether or not there's a presence of a chronic total occlusion. And I think that those two particular anatomic lesion characteristics are also independent risk factors for significant macroscopic embolization. I like to and point out the length of this thing. Right. So, so just so you guys can film this to see how long this catheter mm -hmm. is and to think that you could do this by yourself with a single set of hands, I think is, you know, it, it's very, very humbling when you think about how complex the setup is for something like this. Uh, but uh, again, this is clearly feasible and, you know, it's, it's clearly working right now. So wh go. what we did just now, as you saw, was we, 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 we took out the orbital atherectomy and now we just have a, a, a simple uh, a balloon here. This I is a, a, a rapid exchange balloon, which is, you know, a, a absolute pleasure after dealing with that over the wire atherectomy system, as you guys can uh, imagine. But again, it's tracking beautifully over this Viper wire. And uh, once again, we, we have it in this, uh, you know, P3 uh, distal popliteal trifurcation segment. And you can see right now it's being uh, in inflated here. And, you know, there's a, a very, very slight waist, uh, but uh, it, it appears to be, you know, perfectly appropriately sized for, for, this, uh, for this vessel here, which is, uh, again, the below knee pop leading into the tibial perineal trunk. So uh, I, I, again, the, the, uh, the, the, the benefit of having a rapid exchange platform for these complex infrainguinal interventions from a radial access really cannot be uh, overstated. It, it's, it's a, it just <laughs> makes the whole case go much more smoothly. And I would hope as we're moving into more uh, mature stent platforms, even atherectomy platforms, that they, they, they recognize the value that we're all seeing in, in rapid exchange when we go uh, from radial to uh, peripheral. If you look, we're basically at the tibial perineal trunk now, and we probably have at least another 20 centimeters of balloon catheter outside of the radial sheath here. So uh, with, we actually cheated a little bit. We went a little bit higher on the radial at the wrist uh, to gain a little bit of length, but uh, with 200 centimeters in this patient specifically, he's five foot nine. We can basically treat um, a, a large extent of the posterior tibial artery or anterior tibial artery or perineal if if those vessels needed treatment. In this patient, I don't think those vessels need treatment right now. Uh, but if, if it was a problem, we could potentially treat those vessels if needed. So I, I think the, you know, the the lesion in the in the in the pop looked great. Uh, you know, I think it's responding very very well. Uh, I think we're going to, you know, shoot the runoff, obviously, and then decide if we want to tackle something else while we're here. And, and again, the, now, we, now we're Very seeing a lesion at the level of the ankle, uh, perhaps related to a little bit of spasm. But, you know, we clearly were able to demonstrate before that the balloon was able to reach. So we may, we may very well go down there with a 2-0 balloon uh, and, uh, again, be able to really go from uh, wrist to ankle uh, and be able to uh, treat this patient. 